poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your host, Brad Wilson. Welcome, 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 my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. Today is Tuesday, which means we got some tactical stuff to talk about. We're going to do an experimental episode this week. John is convinced that you're going to love it. It's going to blow your mind. It's just going to be the best thing of all time. I'm less than convinced because... Uh, we're going to do some Pio node locking for the podcast listener. Things are about to get dicey, you know, an audio only format. Things are going to get dicey. And if you want to check out the video side of this, youtube.com slash chasing poker greatness, you can subscribe. I have no earthly idea how this is going to go, uh, audio wise. So if it goes to hell in a handbasket, send your angry emails to John at tactical Tuesday.com. Yeah. Uh, we, we definitely are going to be throwing the audio the podcast listeners under the bus a little bit in this episode but yeah i mean if you guys like this episode then it was my idea and if this ends up being terrible then it was brad's so <laughs> <laughs> you, you just made me realize that i I need to like go buy the tactical tuesday.com url and in case somebody somebody else already owns it i have no idea that's probably some like military equipment website or something yeah they're in going to thank me for the traffic that I just sent their way. Um, okay, John. So this is, this is all you, man. I, I'm going to throw you under the bus wholly so and completely. So break down. We're only going to look at hand. one hand uh, today and kind of the, the plan for this episode is to very briefly look at this, um, you know, somewhat standard hand that I played last night and then use Pio um, to, uh, kind of tweak the river and like just basically examine the river to see um, how a villain under bluffing or over bluffing um, might change my river decision. So we'll just get started with the hand and then uh, do Pio in the second second act of the episode. Uh, this hand starts with a button open. I three bet the small blind with pocket queens. Uh, the button calls. Uh, we're only seven hands into this session at the stable, so we have no stats on the button. Um, I start with a small range bet on this ace, king, deuce, rainbow flop. Uh, I guess for the podcast, podcast listener, I have queen of clubs, queen of diamonds. The suits aren't terribly relevant, I think. Um, but the flop is ace, king, deuce, rainbow. I see bet small. The button calls. Uh, we're, we're leaving out sizings. I mean, but 1K and L, everything is pretty... Standard up to this point on the flop, it looks like you bet like quarter pot. Yeah, quarter. Yeah, look quarter quarter pot on the flop. Um, all right. So there's three seventy three in the pot on the turn. Three forty three. Uh, three forty three, and you have eight seventy three. So what's next? Turn pairs the king. Right. So now the board is ace king deuce king. Um, I am going to be checking range one second. Pair pairs on the turn. Uh, so I check the button stabs turn for a third pot. I call the river is the eight of spades. I check the river going to be doing this with uh, all the hands that check call the turn and the button jams the river for about 1.5 X pot and I fold pocket Queens. Um, all right. I don't think this hand is particularly exciting in itself, um, but what I thought would be kind of cool to look at is um, kind of make some assumptions about this button and how he is playing relative to equilibrium. So I think the first step would be to see how what my hand wants to do, what pocket queens wants to do on the river in equilibrium. And then um, let's actually let, let me just give my opinion on the spot before yeah, yeah, we dive sure. into Pio too, just in just to and then we haven't node locked and ran this spot yet. So I, I actually haven't even looked at the pile output, but I would say that like, you know, what queen suits do you have? You have the diamonds and clubs. So um, the, the first thing is that 
you, you don't block either one of the king queens with your exact hand. Yeah, but they're going to have the uh, offsuits. You think they're going to have full offsuit king queens as well? Yeah, button versus small blind. I would I would expect most. Yeah. So how so how many how many combos of offsuits do they have? Uh, two, two, four. Two, four combos. Okay. Um, so they have King of King of Hearts, Queen of Spades, Queen of Spades. Queen of Hearts. Yeah, so that's only one offsuit combo. King of Hearts, Queen oh, of Spades. Oh, only offsuit combos. But they're going to yeah. have the suited combos too. Right, right. right. Okay. Um, so basically, are they going to have... How many combos do they have here? Like one, two, three, four? Four combos of King Queen? Yeah. Four combos of King Queen, King Jack suited, um, two combos, and King Ten suited, two combos. So... Eight combos of King X, mm -hmm. most likely King Jack off is you know, generally a fold. Um, but if they have that, then that's like four extra combos. But we're at eight combos of value. Uh, they'll also have deuces, so eleven value combos. Available bluffs are probably going to be you block a lot of the available bluffs with Queen of Diamonds, Queen of Clubs, um, the backdoor draws. So. Villain would have to be turning a hand, uh, you know, a pocket pair into a bluff, basically. Yeah, or Jack Ten suited. Right, Jack Ten suited. We're trying to like figure out how to reach bluff catch threshold, right? Oh, like how many yeah, yeah. how many combos of like bluffs do they have? So they have eight, eight combos of like pure value. We could actually say probably like ten combos of value if they do slow play aces, because I think aces is a hand that makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. Um, if they don't four bet them pre, which. A lot of villains these days are not four betting. Maybe they're listening to Tactical Tuesday and not pure four betting. What uh, about a in, hand like pocket position. eights? Um, pocket eights, maybe. Yeah, I guess they could stab the turn like small and then check back, get value from like some worse gut shots and stuff like that. Although it's a bit much for me, but maybe they have like half combos of eights too. Okay. So, so we have like 10 to 12 uh, value combos and needing to find uh, getting two to one on the river, something like Big six bluff, less six, to six to eight bluff combos. Yeah, less less than two to one, but I mean close-ish. Need yeah. to win like 36% of the time or so. Um, Intuitively, I would think that I guess they have ace. Do they have ace queen suited for value or ace queen off? That's an interesting one. Oh, that seems like pretty thin on the river to be. Yeah, one point five x in the river with ace ace queen or ace jack. I would expect a lot of those hands to check the river back. Yeah, I think so too. Um, okay, so with all that said, like my intuition is that this is probably a call on the river, but. Oh wow! Okay, let's go. Yeah, when let's you, go when you, yeah, pile. when you put it that way, and you count like count how few bluff combos that they really need to have, it probably does seem possible that they are. Uh, it probably does seem more likely to me now that they are likely to be over bluffing the river. If they if they're turning pocket pairs into bluffs, I guess that's like the main main component. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a big part of it. I mean, they'll have queen, uh, you know, natural bluffs like queen jack of hearts, um, queen ten of hearts. And then three Jack tens. That's five right there. Uh, queen Jack of Hearts, Queen Ten of Hearts, Queen Jack of. Yeah, I guess the other one probably just folds on the flop. Maybe. What's the other one? You don't think all the Jack tens call the flop? At a quarter, he's in position. Yeah. So Jack Ten of Diamonds, Queen Ten of Diamonds, Queen Jack of Diamonds. Maybe, probably. I yeah, I, I think they have to. I mean, not <laughs> basically. I I think it's good to call here in on this sort of static board with your gut shots to try to realize like future bluffing opportunities should they provide themselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they probably have all four combos of suited jack ten and then 
queen jack of spades, queen ten of spades, queen jack of hearts, queen ten of hearts. Yep. As well. So I mean, shoot, we're already at eight eight bluff combos, but possibly. Right, right. Um Okay, so now let's look at Pio, see what Mistress Pio has to say um about this spot. I'm gonna bring Pio to the fray, and this is where the podcast listener is most likely going to get sad. All right. So here we are. Um, I'm just going to make it to the river node. So bet call what was a turn clubs. King of clubs. clubs. Uh, check. Stab call. Eight of something. Spades. Eight of spades. Check. And bet. And the first thing to, you know, that I see is like they're only supposed to have three point two combos that make it to this path in equilibrium, um, which is going to be yeah a lot of like uh, their king X yeah. And then some their bluffs are, you know, the Queen Jacks and the Queen Tens. Mm -hmm. And then like a smattering of the small pocket pairs. Yeah. Jack Ten doesn't look like Jack Ten's bluffing here. All right. So bet and with your queens, you're supposed to call. Calling about <laughs> half the time and folding about half the time. Yeah. Even though all the calls look to be plus EV. Let me see. Our ex do our exact suits matter that much in this? We had Queen of Clubs, Queen of Diamonds. Okay, yeah. With the clubs, it's like slightly more of a call. That's interesting. Uh, with the clubs, it looks like it's more than doubles the EV. Like yeah. the only better one to have would be Queen of Hearts, Queen of Clubs. Yeah. And it's unsure why that's better, but yeah. I guess. Intuition led me to at least your exact hand. Yeah. Pretty decent. All right. So now what are we going to do, John? We're going to, oh, yeah. I gonna... think like we should just recap like what we've just described basically to the All right. listener. Um, so just like following along like the line that like we took in the actual hand, um, I think all the actions that we took and all the actions that villain took um, are like Pio approved in terms of like frequency and sizes, like I'm supposed to be checking range on the turn. And um, I don't know. It's like, we haven't like deviate. We haven't done anything like wacky, um, at least in theory land to, to get to this river. Um, and basically what this Pio output is saying is that uh, the villain on the button should be jamming. Um, I think it was like 26% of the time on the river. And if we're, if we were playing against like a perfect GTO bot player, then uh, we should be calling about half the time with our queens and folding um, folding half the time with our queens and expect to win um, $15.6 uh, overall calling with our queens. Um, I think what would what the next interesting step uh, to do here is look at the hands that villain is supposed to be jamming on the river and make a slightly better approximation of what we think they are actually jamming. Um, so whether that means they're slightly over bluffing or under bluffing the river, um, we I guess we have yet to see and then see like how that affects our uh, calling or folding frequency with queens. All right. So after the break, we're going to do some some locking. And so stick around. Um, see what turns up so far. Coach Brad River call approved. Let's see if anything changes after the break. Fish dog bets the flop, and you don't know what to do. One man, Coach Brad Wilson, has a surefire plan to neutralize flop leads and rip that dunk to shreds. Nuffle. Available now. Go to chasingpokergreatness.com slash nuffle. Rated R. All right. Welcome back to this week's episode of Tactical Tuesday. 
we have Ran, The Lock, and John, I, I guess we'll dive in since this is your baby here. Direct me on what to do. Yeah, so um, Brad mentioned before we went to the break that on the river, uh, the villain on the button in Equilibrium it was jamming about 3.2 combos, which is about 25% of the hands that they get to the river with. Um, what we've done is node locked uh, villains actions on the river so that they're jamming slightly fewer, uh, slightly less, um, and are only jamming two and a half combos, which uh, brings their frequency down to 21%. And then uh, we, we can just show like the types of hands that we removed that we thought uh, were probably unlikely to be bluffed at, at the frequency that Pio wants the button. To so be yeah, I wanna make one um, correction here. It's 25% of the hands that we're jamming with when we get to the river in this exact line, right? That there's That's a big difference because it's not like you don't always get to the river in this exact line. There are many different paths to getting yeah. to the river, but in this path, um, that was the change. Right. So we're going to look at the node lock. Um, and so it is locked, and, and they, can't, they can't see the node lock on the screen so basically the hands that we removed from Pio, we'll just describe them it's not like we're splitting the atom here yeah. uh, we, we removed the pocket pairs so basically the, the pocket pairs um trays fours five sixes sevens eights nines and tens and jacks so basically those hands uh the percent the fractional percentage they were supposed to be jamming the river we took that away it equaled in total uh, 0.7 combos as john said and so now we're gonna look at our ev with the queens and they bet and so now strategy and ev queens according to our calculations queens is now losing 269 dollars um whereas before queens was winning uh some winning something like 269 i'm getting two i see 287 on yours 287 i don't see 287 oh. there's minus 280 minus 281 minus 269 minus 291 oh our combo our combo oh, okay sorry i was looking at queens and aggregate yeah okay yeah our, yeah. our specific combo right um i i can't remember what, what it was before equilibrium it was uh, like 27 it was? it was like winning two big blinds 20s, so yeah, yeah went, went from like plus 2.7 big blinds to minus 200 or minus 28. 20 big blinds yeah. 20 28 big blinds so yeah. pretty pretty significant difference just with one single node lock yeah and i think that's i mean that that was like the relationship that i really wanted to show in uh in this episode was that like all we did was strip away 0.7 combos that the button is jamming and that affects our calling frequency like to this extent where we were just if you look at our range, we're no longer bluff catching. We we only have king X and aces, that or I mean we don't we don't have like you know thin bluff catchers. We we we're only calling with king X and aces, um, pocket aces. Pocket like aces. We're we're folding ace ace queen ace jack. We're folding right. all of our top pair. Right, and like that's all like all it takes is removing like point seven combos, um, or like four percent of their jamming range, uh, for our bluff catching range to. Uh, shift this dramatically um i think you can also extrapolate what we're seeing here um and assume that everything shifts in the other direction as well if villain is slightly over bluffing where queens would probably become a, a a slam dunk call that wins tons of money versus a villain that's slightly over bluffs relative to equilibrium we're probably calling hands like jacks and tens and nines um as well once once they start over bluffing um so yeah i, I thought this was like a pretty cool example of Hey, like all you need to do is shift one tiny thing um, in terms of like combos or frequencies, and uh, our response changes dramatically uh, relative to that tiny little tweak. Yeah, I mean, this is the dangerous side of Pio, right? Just sort of like accepting a, an output and saying like, "Oh, this is the gospel. This is what I'm going to try to do here." Um, first of all, it's really hard to get to this spot on the river with only. You know, however many combos that villain's supposed to have. So, like when villain bets, they're supposed to get to the this this river spot with um, nine point four. 
yeah, like 12 combos, basically 12 combos of hands. I'm going to say something that may be controversial, but I believe they're going to get to the river with more than 12 combos of hands here in, in the wilderness when you're battling in the streets. So like, yeah, it's just, it's very hard to really discern and take what Pio gives us as the end all be all solution when human beings just aren't, they're just not playing their ranges in the way that Pio wants them to, you know, I think it, just kind of goes into human beings being kind of flawed and <laughs> as it relates to poker and we're just not operating on the same level. Yeah. I think this is like, hopefully what I hope we also accomplished with this example of using Pio is that we showed that using solvers or, or utilizing solvers is not necessarily just looking at equilibrium and seeing what happens. But basically what we did was we just, we, we looked at a river situation where the population is definitely over bluffing or under bluffing. Like there's no way population plays exactly at equilibrium. And, you know, based on whether we think that they're over bluffing or under bluffing, we can see how our response changes. Um, and I think those sorts of relationships and heuristics are, uh, I don't know, kind of like the meat and like what the big takeaways from Pio um, end up being rather than, you know, memorizing specific lines or combos that you're supposed to do random, you know, niche actions with, um, I think like sort of the big picture takeaways that hopefully we, uh, managed to, I don't know, take away in this episode are, are, are much more important than, than sort of like the minutia and the, the ultra level of detail that you can get into in Pio. And I, I think inevitably people will ask, you know, why such a massive swing in the bluff catching EV, right? Like, why did that happen? Yeah. And would you have to realize like, you know, the podcast listener right now, uh, here on the river, the setup after node locking is 2.5 combos of jamming, 3.1 combos of betting, 75% pot, and 6.3 combos of checking. And what happened was when we when we locked and removed that 0.7 combos, that 0.7 combos, Queens had 100% equity against that 0.7 combos. And we lost that 100% equity versus those hands. It went into their checking. So that dramatically reduce the amount of equity that our queens had that's what caused it to to plummet because on the river your equities are absolute you know it's either a hundred or zero and we removed all uh hands that we have a hundred percent equity share against um and they were only bluffing 3.2 percent or 3.2 combos anyway so like 0.7 of that you know, that's like 30%. We removed 30% of the hands that we have 100% equity against. So yeah, I think like intuitively, if you think about it logically, that's just a thing that's going to happen. Um, so wanted to answer that question in, in case the, the podcast listener or the YouTube watcher um, was thinking it. Anything else before we close down shop? This is like, I, I gotta say, John, this is not so bad for a Tactical Tuesday episode. I, I think you you did a good job, and we're out of here, right? Like, I can I can go watch the Titans. <laughs> I can watch the the kickoff. I, I I understand you're listening to this on Tuesday, but we always do this on Sunday, and I, I've just I missed the first quarter because we always go over. But somehow we've managed to like use Pio and get out of here and under. Yeah, 25 minutes. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section, I guess, on YouTube if if you guys like this type this style of Tactical Tuesday. And if not, we'll just never open Pio again <laughs> on street or on Tactical Tuesday. I'm rooting for them to like it so that uh we can have more 25 minute episodes of Tactical yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. One hand only. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, one hand only. Oh god. Let's uh, please don't request that we do two of these hands. Um <laughs> And, you know, for those of you who are listening to this week's episode, just want to give another mention to cpgwolves.com. Get in your application. Uh, I've gotten, you know, four wolves are locked in. They're pretty much ready to rock and roll. And then I have a couple that um, may or may not get offered a contract. And once I hit five, the plan is to shut it down. But if any highly qualified applicant, um, yeah, maybe you can persuade me to operating with six or seven from the jump. Either way, I'm going to save the applications and reach out to people when, you know, onboarding and recruitment expands. So that's it. That's all I got. That's our show. Only one thing left to say, John. 
See you next week. Yep. See you next Tuesday. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.